appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, this is a great opportunity, I think, to announce what most people already know, that we're continuing one of the Capital Region's best sporting events. Uh, and we're continuing an event that for 15 years, plus if you go back before any of us, I think, in this room were involved, had great support from the community. Uh, it averages over 10,000 people per game. Uh, it engages business people, it engages fans, it engages political leaders. But I think one of the most important things, to be honest with you, is engages our student bodies. And I think in an era where you read that student attendance, it's live sporting events is declining, not to be able to engage them the way they want to be engaged uh, wouldn't be the right thing to do. And I think getting to this point was not difficult. I know some people said there was a lot of acrimony, there was squabbling back and forth. Not the case. I think that when you have leadership that understands what a good deal is, understands that you don't always get 100% of what you want, but if you can bring the people everything that they want, then that's a success. Uh, and that's where we are today. I want to thank Mark Benson for how he has approached this. I want to thank our administration at Siena College, our president, Brother Ed Coughlin, and our board of trustees for supporting this outcome. I want to thank our two coaches, too, Allie Jackson and Jimmy Passos, because they were squarely behind this. They recognize the importance of this event to the area. All the teams involved, all four teams, the men's teams, the women's teams, have great programs, great tradition, and have had great success. There's no doubt about that. I think one of the one things that, that I want to say in my remarks, though, is both schools do it the right way. Both schools graduate their student athletes at a rate that far exceeds the national average. Uh, all the coaches recruit quality student athletes. We're not all perfect. We all make mistakes sometimes, but at the end of the day, we all realize that the academic mission of our colleges and our university drive what we do athletically. And that's why this event is so important, because it allows us to engage our communities in a great way. It allows us to engage our student body, and it allows our student athletes to compete at a high level in an event, really, that probably is rivaled nationally for what we're able to draw, what we're able to bring to the arenas where this, these games will be played. So I think it's a great opportunity for everybody. It's a great opportunity for the area. I want to thank the folks from New Albany for, for helping us get this done. I want to thank our people at Siena for being behind it. Well, thanks, uh, and, and John's right. You don't get 100% if you want. I, I really wanted to go first because he's pretty eloquent. I, I, he's a tough act to follow. So, um, you know, I'm excited. We are pretty new to the community. I started in September. Uh, in, a, in a really short uh, period of time, it became very clear to me uh, what this rivalry means to both institutions, um, to the greater capital region. Um, it stirs a lot of passion like any good rivalry does. Uh, it's quality institutions, quality teams. Um, and, and one good thing about our job is you take a lot of great free advice, and I took a lot um, uh, about many things on campus, but in particular, I think this, this series. And, and it was significant to me because um, I like that. I like people voicing their opinion. I, I like people talking. It's better, the alternative is silence, which really tells you that there's, there's no passion for something and there's, there's no energy. But this, this rivalry, this uh, goes way back, as John mentioned, and it does stir a lot of passions on both sides. And I'm, I'm really happy to be new uh, to this in, in the rivalry. And in going through this, you can imagine uh, what I was being told. I was getting more one side, the Albany side of the story. Uh, but I really felt it was important to talk to as many people and get a balanced uh, viewpoint uh, on, on this because as John alluded to, I think it's bigger than either institution. It, it, it reaches far into the community and into the, the, the politicians, our citizens, our alumni base, and, and our current students, and, and not just the student athletes. And, and I think this is, um, I think the best advice I got um, was uh, I was talking to Michael Castellan at SEFQ, and you know, just to get his, his thoughts on it, and he said, you know, what I think you should do collectively is work for a win win. Work for a win for UAlbany, work for a win for Siena, and more importantly, get a win for the capital region. And I feel very good about uh, the fact that we were able to do that. Um, I might touch a little bit just on the format, because it is a, a three-year deal. It's a little bit different than a traditional uh, series, I think. We're going to start in 15, and somebody correct me on December 12th at the Times Union, which will serve as um, Siena's home game. We've modified it. Uh, we've got a little better ability on our side. 
um, to get some some seats for our fans to accommodate some some of that interest and, and um, I think that's important and significant because I think we're both coming from a place where this is already a great rivalry and we want to build on it and we want to strengthen it uh, as, in every way possible. Um, so 15 will be there in 2016. We'll be uh, on the Albany campus at SethQ uh, Arena, which is. Uh, really significant for us because uh, we are a part of the community as well and I think uh, we, when you talk about students being able to really participate in this rivalry, you know, you always want to do it every now and then on your own campus. So this gives our students a chance to participate on campus. It gives our, our, our university a chance to, to showcase the campus, which you know many people may not have been on in a while. So it gives a, an opportunity for the community to come on, on campus. Uh, so I think it was important to our fans and our students that we try to bring that here. And then in the third year, uh, so when we get a little bit off the, the uh, end of the creative path, we're, we're going to participate in a, a multi-team event um, where we'll each get two um, high major games yet to be determined, so don't ask which teams, we, we have a, a general pool, but we'll each get two road games, we'll each get a home game uh, on our own campus out of that, and then the road game, the fourth game, which will be uh, our game, we'll play Siena at the Times Union, and it will serve as their like home game. And where we, I think, really uh, are able to, to um, satisfy, I think, most, as many people as possible is we've agreed to have a, a, perhaps a 30-day window of ticket sales through our prospective uh, box offices. So Siena will sell their season ticket holders to their box office. UAlbany will do the same for our season ticket holders for us. And at the end of that 30-day period, we're going to get together uh, and jointly allocate those seats. So, we feel like this will be, certainly from our end, help us get more of our, our fans coming down to the Times Union and, and nudge that number from 10, hopefully uh, up higher and higher as we go. So I really want to thank John. Uh, I, I guess there were rumors it wasn't going well, but you know, we, we developed a really good relationship. I think we're just looking for excuses to get together and talk, and certainly as a new guy, uh, you know, benefit from his wisdom, but I really appreciate the collaboration and the openness which we were able to, you know, handle these negotiations. So. Again, I think a couple other things that we want to touch on, we're in um, some level of activity in talking to a corporate sponsor about uh, helping build a rivalry and brand uh, the Albany Cup, and, and perhaps we, we do that jointly and sp split the proceeds you know, in half of our campuses to help enhance that. And we're going to look for other opportunities around the game to engage more of our fans, more of the community. So what that may mean, we're going to still kick around some good ideas with other points of engagement uh, for the community. So. Um, I'd just like to say thanks to everybody for this cooperation, and I'm looking forward to the next three years and learning more and experiencing more of this rivalry. So I think I will turn it now to Coach Passos. It's uh, interesting, Mark and I have some very mutual good friends. Um, and to hear him say he's new to the area, so am I. I've only been here two years. And uh, this is an unbelievable rivalry. The only thing I was part of was we, we played Georgetown in Maryland and we had beaten them and they canceled the rivalry. And that was the only thing I had as a reference point to this and that was a really painful thing for us. And um, I didn't want to see that happen where I was in charge of a basketball program. In other words, that really hurt the D.C. area and it's never been the same basketball-wise. They've tried everything. And I think one of the things Will, and I don't speak for Will, but his point was, was this game can't be replaced. And I, and I totally agree with him that this is a special game, and so you have to work to get it done. And Marquise Wright and Brett Bisping came and saw me and said how important it was to play. And I said, well, we might have to go over there. And they said, great. And I think when you hear from the student athletes, like John said, that, hey, that's cool. We want to go over there. They don't, they don't get into politics. They don't know any of this stuff. They just want to play ball. And you can't forget, that's why we all got in coaching. So I think it's great for the community. Uh, my, five, my, my four assistants, myself and wife, live down here, so we're really happy it's keeping going because otherwise no one's going to let us in their restaurants. See, you kind of have to bring them business here. And, and then across the street pub is, is in, in places like Barcelona and City Line deserve to have their night up there. In other words, I don't just look at this as a game, but that's, that's part of Albany, and they get to get that business. And I just want to thank Will because He's putting his credit card down at Across the Street Pub for the free happy hour for all the Siena fans. So go to the air, just say, Will Brown's tab, he'll take care of it, and then we'll play the game in South Q in two years. Thanks a lot. Oh, 
Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> that same credit card is going to be used to purchase every ticket available for the game in the SEPQ arena. <laughs> no, but uh, all kidding aside, um, I think it's great. Here we are, uh, third week of June, and we're talking about college basketball. This is a great area for college basketball and for sports in general. I'd like to thank uh, Mark Benson and John D'Argenio for keeping this series alive. I'd especially like to thank uh, our new director of athletics, Mark Benson. Um, as he said, he's new to the area. And of course, uh, one of our first conversations was Albany, Siena. And there were two things that I stressed to Mark. Uh, I wanted to keep playing this game, and I wanted to game in the SEPQ arena. And uh, so thank you, Mark, for accommodating. And thank you, John, for your willingness uh, to step foot in uh, SEPQ arena and, and play us. We really do appreciate it. Um, you know, this is a, a great game uh, for the community. The University of Albany is a big part of this community. So I'm ecstatic for our season ticket holders, our fans, our alumni, my good friend Michael Castellano, the CFQ, uh, CEO of CFQ and his team. Um, you know, we're excited. CFQ is a great venue. Uh, we're going to sell it out. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but more importantly, uh, this game and this series is tremendous for this area. And we're really excited about moving forward. And I have a lot of respect for, for Jimmy Patsos and the Siena program. It's rich in history and tradition. You know, I think we're still a young Division I program that's creating and developing that history and tradition. So I think you have two tremendous institutions, two very good basketball prep programs, uh, and a community that embraces this series and game. So I thank all of you for being here uh, today and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. Well, 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 you're supposed to introduce me. Hi. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Apparently, we hang out at similar restaurants, and every time I go in there, they say that you were in there, heard that I was there, but I can't get a follow on Twitter from you, so. Uh, I'm working on that. Maybe one day you'll follow me on Twitter. Um, thanks to everyone for being here today. Um, as a head coach of a team, it's your job to take care of your team. It's your job to put your team in position um, to be successful and to have the chance to play a program that's done what Albany's done in the past four years and in and, and Katie's time here. Um, we love challenges and we love competition and we certainly have a work cut out for us. We're getting there. Um, so to have the chance to have this be not just a men's rivalry, but a women's rivalry is really, really important to this community. And the fact that all of you are here to support and um, to showcase both, I think is really, really important. Um, part of that, being part of an athletic department is also being um, having the opportunity to give back to your community. And that's what this game is. Um, we're lucky. We're really, really blessed. There's a lot of people out there that aren't as blessed as we are to do what we do every day. And to have the chance to showcase women's basketball as much as men's basketball, I think is really, really important. So um, I, I think Katie and I would both agree maybe on this, that if we can, if we can up the fans in the stands for our game, if we can promote this rivalry as much as the men's is, I think if you look at what's happened with both of our programs and their program and, and what we were able to do postseason, and if you look at the response of what Sienna hosting a Sweet 16 was able to do in this community for women's basketball, I just think it's really important. And I'm really lucky to have a boss that promotes women's basketball as well. So I'm excited for this game. I mean, we got on a plate and played in the swamp last spring. We'll play anywhere. So we're excited. We love to compete. And Katie, you're next. Thanks. Go Saints. Well, hello everybody. It's nice to see you in June. Uh, you know, we, when I think of this game five years ago when I came here, I had no idea what it was about. The only thing that I had reference to was when I was at Iowa State, the Iowa-Iowa State rivalry, or when I was at Michigan State, the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry. And I think all of us coaches that we think of this game and when we, we don't really think of the game and get really competitive till the, the jump ball starts. But what it does, and I think especially for women's basketball, is the community and young little girls that get to come out and watch two great teams, two great groups of coaches, uh, and the true student athlete. I know for me personally, my daughters love to come. They love to 
have some great role models out there, and I think there's tons of AAU programs here, there's tons of youth groups out here for small little girls, and I know there's some dads out there that like to bring their daughters to games, and I think it's a great opportunity for them just to be involved in sport and see women play at a really high level. I think that's really important. Um, so obviously I really wanted to keep the series going because I think it's awesome for the community, it's awesome for, you know, obviously everybody in this room, um, but most importantly it's great for the young boys and girls that get to come out and watch all the games. So we're really excited. Thank you.